Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. And today we will talk about what are the top five most asked CACD interview questions and their answers. We'll try to answer these questions uh, more on the basis of some scenarios. So let's quickly uh, jump into the questions and see their answers as well. So the first one is explain your current CACD setup. I think this question can be asked in multiple ways. Like people ask you, what is your CACD tooling? Uh, what are the tools that you're using? Or uh, what is CACD according to you? How, you, how CACD is established in your organization. So whatever it is, uh, the answer to it has to be very elaborate because this question basically uh, gives you, gives the interviewer a chance to analyze your knowledge on CACD. So tell the answer in a most detailed way so that uh, he or she can understand uh, your expertise on CACD. So basically I have written the answer here. You can probably, I mean, I'll not read everything here. Uh, you can go through the answer, but uh, generally you can say, CICD is continuous integration and continuous delivery. And uh, in the current organization, we are using GitHub and uh, we are using Jenkins for the continuous integration uh, where we have set up a webhook which triggers on each and every commit that is made to GitHub and triggers a CI, uh, CI pipeline on Jenkins. And then you can talk about multiple stages that are in your Jenkins pipeline. Like you can say you have a build stage, you have test stage, you have deploy stage. And uh, you know, whenever you're talking about these things, uh, basically detail them uh, like, how, what is your build stage? Uh, what what are the different things that are in your build stage, like static code analysis, unit testing, building, and then in your test stage, uh, whether you're doing smoke testing or you're doing functional testing in your deployment staging, uh, in your deployment stage, basically explain uh, what is your artifactory, how you're building your Docker image or uh, application uh, archive, whatever, whatever you're building, and then uh, explain how you're deploying it onto your Kubernetes cluster or uh, WebSphere, WebLogic application servers, whatever your uh, end target cluster is. So this is about your CI/CD setup and the process. And the second question, I think this is a very important question. How do you handle secrets? Because mostly people will be very prepared for the uh, first answer, uh, first question, uh, the CI/CD process and everything. But you need to explain uh, how do you handle secrets because secrets are integral part of every application these days, right? So whether your SSH keys, whether your API key, whether uh, it can be your, uh, you know, uh, Kubernetes uh, login secret or anything, uh, you deal with a lot of secrets these days in your CI/CD pipelines. So basically answer this question depending upon where your Jenkins or any CI tool is set up. Let's say you're on GitHub, right? So GitHub provides an option for uh, securing your secrets in the uh, CI/CD uh, in the action CI/CD itself. If you're on GitLab, there is again, uh, there is an option for uh, securing your secrets in the uh, CI variables itself. Uh, on your on your GitLab UI. Uh, apart from that, let's say you're on a uh, cloud provider like AWS. So probably you can say you store your secrets in AWS systems manager and retrieve whenever it is required. Or if you're on Azure, you are probably using Azure Vault. And uh, one of the popular tools, uh, irrespective of the uh, cloud or anything that you are in, uh, HashiCorp Vault. So HashiCorp called Vault is one of the most used uh, applications for securing uh, storing your secrets. So uh, be prepared with this answer because this is one of the most asked uh, interview questions for CICD. After that, people ask about your deployment strategy. What I have uh, seen most of the times is most of the times is that people are very prepared uh, with respect to the continuous integration CI part, but uh, not with the CD, the continuous delivery. But you know, uh, CI is very easy to set up as well. You have tools like Jenkins, GitHub Actions. It's very easy to do uh, CI. But coming to CD, you have to be uh, very, uh, you know, uh, keen on how you are setting your CD. What is your type of application where you are deploying your application onto? So continuous delivery is uh, a key uh, component for. Uh, your entire CACD as well as during your interviews, people ask a lot about CD. So coming to the uh, deployment strategy, you can talk about the popular deployment strategies if you have employed either blue green deployment or canary deployment on your uh, side, on your organization. So depending upon what you have uh, set up, probably answer these things, but uh, to explain what is blue green and what is canary in a very uh, short way. So blue green deployment is basically where, uh, if you see the picture onto the left side, um, you know, using blue green deployment, what to do is that you already have an application. Let's say the application version is 34 and you are deploying a new version of your application, probably call it 35. Okay. So firstly, what you do is that 
you point your load balancer to the uh, application 34, which is deployed on your cluster. Then you install uh, application 35 on the same cluster, the new version using your CI CD pipeline. And what you do is that you shift your load balancer to the application 35. And uh, so that no uh, traffic is sent to the application 34. However, you provide some grace period, grace time uh, for the users that are already on application 34. And once this grace period is over, you simply point your load balancer. I mean, you already pointed your uh, load balancer to 35. You just delete application 34. Once you are confident about your application testing and everything. Okay, so this is the process using blue green deployment. Now, the other uh, popular deployment strategy is the canary deployment strategy and using canary what you do is that uh, basically you shift in the same way you deploy both application 34 and 35, but instead of directly point your load balancer to application 35, what you do is that you limit your uh, traffic to application 35. Initially, you send only 10% of your traffic. So all this modern day load balancer like F5 or Nginx or any uh, load balancer using Ingress, they are able to do it uh, by, you know, they call it ratio based uh, ratio based load balancing or weight based load balancing, whatever it is. So uh, initially route only 10% and then probably you can switch the gears 66, 33 and then finally you can do 30%. So there are very lot of, I mean, there are a lot of tools which can achieve this uh, for the Canary deployment model. Uh, if you want to, to learn about uh, uh, canary deployment probably uh, you can google for canary deployment and tools can be used to achieve the canary deployment but all the popular load balancer can do it these days now what do you do if the deployed application is faulty or let's say your application has security vulnerabilities or your application is faulty it's not working as expected so what do you do one of the most easy ways to answer this is uh, talk about the blue green deployment which we talked in the previous slide because if you look here carefully uh, if something goes wrong with your blue green deployment what you can immediately do is that point your load balancer from 35 to 34 or people uh, basically do it using uh, multiple sites right so blue site and green site and if something goes wrong they immediately point their load balancer to the green uh, from green side to the blue side so this is the most easy way uh, blue green deployment uh, but if you are employing any other uh, deployment strategies you have to be very careful on explaining how did you roll how do you actually roll back but blue green is the most easy way to roll back so this question uh, the way you answer is when something goes wrong, we have a rollback pipeline or we have a strategy for rollback uh, because we are doing blue green deployment. Uh, it is very easy for us to roll back. Finally, uh, Jenkins setup, backup and scaling up. So how do you do this? The reason why I put this question only related to Jenkins is that uh, I recently set up a poll on my uh, YouTube channel asking what is the most popular CI tool that you're using. 90% uh, of the people uh, choose Jenkins, only 10% uh, of them choose GitHub Actions, GitLab, and uh, uh, Travis, I think nobody has actually opted for it. So uh, the reason for me to talk about Jenkins in this specific question is because of that. So uh, this is again, uh, important question because uh, apart from setting up your uh, CI CD pipelines, it is always in, important for you to understand how your CI tool or gen for that for this question Jenkins how your Jenkins is set up how do you uh, take backups for your Jenkins uh, logs or builds or artifacts anything and then how do you scale up because you know uh, at times you might get more number of builds at times you get uh, less builds so scaling up scale down is also one of the interesting uh, aspects so it's very easy to with do with Jenkins. Uh, I think Jenkins installation is the most easiest thing. Uh, you just have an, uh, you can do it through Docker as well. You have uh, a simple uh, curl command that you can use to install Jenkins. I can show you uh, some other time. How do you install Jenkins? It, you can, uh, I mean, nobody will actually care about the installation because it's just a single command. But the most important thing is a backup as well as scaling up. So for scaling up, I would say one of the, um, uh, I'll take an example. Let's say your Jenkins is on AWS. What you can say is that uh, Jenkins is set up on AWS and we have uh, set up Jenkins uh, on EC2 instance and we have set up an auto scaling group. So this auto scaling group basically takes care of uh, scaling up, scaling down. We have employed the predictive scaling uh, on the AWS auto scaling. So predictive scaling basically uh, takes care. It basically predicts like at this time you might get uh, more traffic at the time you might get uh, less traffic so it can, it will automatically scale up an EC2 instance and once the EC2 instance is uh, spinned up uh, Jenkins basically uses SSH 
to uh, interact with the newly created node. So this is the process. And for backup, I think Jenkins has a dot backup folder. Uh, if you can, uh, sorry, dot Jenkins folder, just backup the dot Jenkins periodically using some cron jobs. And uh, that will basically take your Jenkins backups. So uh, this is the uh, top five in CACD interview questions that I have for you. And uh, if you feel that I missed something or there are other popular interview questions uh, related to CACD, please post them in the comment section and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.